Welcome to The Hive Podcast, a show that helps inspire you to pursue your passions and ambitions. My name is Jared Spink, and I'm your host. I'm a photographer, videographer, and entrepreneur. Join me as I sit down with other entrepreneurs and creators to learn more about their process, how they built communities around their brands, and the experiences they've had along the way. I hope that these conversations inspire you to pursue your goals. You're listening to The Hive Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to the Hive Podcast. As always, thank you for watching or listening. However, you're consuming the content. I really do appreciate your guys' support each and every week. And as always, I have a fantastic guest this week. Uh, I actually just got done recording a podcast for his podcast, and it was a great conversation. So now he's coming on the show. We can dive into his podcast, his YouTube channel, his creativity. And if you love tech, you might know this guest. This is Patrick, known as Patrick Rambles, everywhere on social media. Patrick, what's up, man? I'm good, thanks. And how yeah. are you? Good, man, good. Thanks for the time. I had a blast on your podcast just a little bit ago. It, it was a ton of fun with you and your co-host, and we're going to dive into that. But for our guests that, that aren't familiar with you, um, w- what is your channel all about? I mean, I, I kind of alluded to it that it's about tech, but tell me uh, hmm. what your channel is about or tell the listeners. Yeah, I mean, we, we were talking about it a little bit earlier, but I'm, I'm definitely a tech head, much like yourself. And uh, basically, I have been a consumer of YouTube tech channels for a long time, and I've always enjoyed watching those channels, buying all that stuff, buying all the gear, the knickknacks, you know, the, the accessories. Um, and then I decided, you know, why not make a YouTube channel myself? It seems like a lot of fun, you know, and I was always... I, 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 I didn't know how to hold a camera, but it was into cameras. I wanted to learn how to do it. <clears throat> and then COVID came around, of course, and uh, you know, I had all this extra time. I'm still running my business, but I didn't have a commute. I didn't have all that time wasted. Uh, so I decided, you know, if this isn't a, a great time, then what is? So I decided to start my channel. And uh, what is it about? It's basically about all the tech that I love. And that often boils down to Apple stuff. So it's iPads, iPhones, you know, MacBooks, uh, but also other things. But that's kind of the core of my channel. That's awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge Apple guy. I think every device that I have is Apple phone, iPad, computer. I mean, once you're in their ecosystem, it is very difficult to get out or even expand on something else um, because it all just works so well together and works horribly with everything else. <laughs> Um, I would love to know the early days of your channel though. So let's, let's dive into that. Um, tell me about that first video. Tell me about the process that went into it. What was it even about? Um, and how nervous were you to hit that upload button? Uh, I was extremely nervous at the upload button. I was also extremely nervous to, to be in front of a camera. Uh, I'm still nervous. I mean, this is kind of new to me. I'm, I'm not often a guest uh, on a show like this. So whenever there's a you know novelty to something or is there's a, it's a new challenge, I get a tiny bit nervous. But I think that's good. It's good nerves. Um, my first video was actually on how to apply a, um, a dbrand, no, a paper-like. It was a paper-like screen protector to the iPad. Um, because I wanted to start my channel based on the iPad, I just bought the iPad Pro, which was my first Apple product after having used a lot of Samsung products for many years. Um, and one of the things I bought because I really wanted to use um, an Apple Pencil for note-taking was a paper-like, but it was a an absolute nightmare to get that thing on there. And I thought maybe, you know, I could help some people by showing them how to do it. It's an absolutely terrible video in many, many ways. Uh, but it actually, you know, ended up getting a couple thousand views over time. So Oops, I cut you off. Sorry about that. That's awesome. It's awesome that I got that many views uh, over time. I, I would love to know, you know, looking back at that video, what, what did you learn from it? And, and if you could fix something in that video, if you could go back and remake that video, what what would you fix or address? Um, I think I would try not to be so stiff. And, you know, I, I was very formal. I tried to be like, I, I don't know. I don't really know how to explain it, but I wasn't being myself. I wasn't having fun. I was just being like, okay, I need to do this now. I need to look good, sound good. And it was just, it was robotic. 
And the second thing I would really change is the the quality. But of course, you know, that's just how it goes. I, like I said, I never held a camera. You know, I, all I used was my phone so far. I had this uh, Sony M6, which was, uh, you know, like a, almost a point and shoot. Uh, and it was on auto and I had no idea about white balance. I was filming underneath uh, tungsten LEDs. So it just looked yellow. It was just terrible. That's awesome. I mean, that that sums it up for a lot of people when they first get started. I mean, you have this passion to want to create something, but you really don't know the process yet or or how to use the tools that you have to get a good quality image. And that should never hold you back, right? Like it didn't hold you back. What were some of the first things you started to address and fix um, along the way? I mean, you started off not knowing really much about cameras, which is totally fine. And I think that's, that's perfectly okay. Like you should get started whether you know how to use a camera or not, but what were the things that you, you took away from that and you started to address and get better at right off the bat? Yeah, I think I was a little bit naive because I thought, you know, if I have a camera, not a phone, then ultimately or, you know, immediately my my quality will will skyrocket and I have I will have camera quality, not phone quality. Of course, that's not true at all. Um, Yeah. And so the first thing I started addressing is first uh, my set, basically, if you can call it that. I was just basically trying to put something together that looked not like a living room. Um, and the second thing I did was change lighting, I think. And I still, to this day, I think lighting is the most important thing, probably even more important than cameras, and maybe equally important to audio. But lighting is the, definitely the first thing I, I bought was a, was a softbox. Yeah, lighting is so, so important. Like right now, if you guys are watching the visual, right, it doesn't matter what kind of camera you have if you don't have lighting. Like I'll turn off my, my lights and I'm completely, I'm black. I'm I, it's bright in my office. I have my background lights on. Like it's super bright in my office. This is how I, I would work in it. But for video, like it, it's horrible. I got to turn these back on. I can't even see myself. So lighting definitely is so, it's so important. It's way more important than the camera than you that you're using. You can use your iPhone. Just get proper lighting to start with. That's, that's such great advice. And also the fact that like you even admitted that, like, oh, I have a camera. Like I'll get camera camera quality Mm -hmm. now right the tools matter only if you know how to use them right that's that's the only way they're going to work like i have a hammer can i build a house no because i I wouldn't know how to use the hammer to build a house like i mean i kind of know how to use a hammer but um i don't know how to build a house so you got to learn technique right i guess is the point i'm trying trying to drive across so how did your channel start to progress over time did it did it start to take off right off the bat tell me about the hard work that went in to get it to where it's at now because you're at um, where are you at now? You're at, man, almost 31,000 subscribers. That's huge. That's a, that's a quick, that's, that's a lot of growth in a short amount of time. So tell me about that journey and, and the work that went into it. How did the channel start to grow? I'm just glancing over to my right because I have this little YouTube counter there that keeps me motivated. And oh, that's I think awesome. I just about 31 today, actually. I don't know if it just hit it or just about to, um, so how did, I mean, in the beginning, of course, uh, it was very difficult. The first 100 subscribers are difficult, I think, for most people. I mean, I've seen people just take off for, you know, whatever reason, and they're just at 100,000 in no time. But most people, most most of us regular people have a very difficult time starting. Um, I ha- didn't really have a plan. I just knew that I wanted to make some videos about the stuff that I loved, that I bought, and, you know, that I wanted to talk about. I was talking to my friends and my family all the time. I was driving them crazy with uh, with my enthusiasm for these products they didn't really care about. So I thought, you know, find an audience that does care about it and kind of nerd out with them. Um, and so I was lucky in a way that this, uh, my first product was a, uh, a 2020 iPad Pro, which had basically just launched. So it was super popular. And uh, I think that really helped. My first videos were, were on that and they kind of took off, you know, for a beginner. My videos got about 5,000 views or something, which for me was huge at that time. Yeah, that's really big. So so from the beginning, it went actually quite well. I got to um, my watch hours way before my my subscribers uh, to get monetized, that is. Um, And then it took me about till the end of the year, end of December. So I started in April 2020, and I ended up with 5,000 subscribers in uh, the beginning of January 2021. 
And now at the end of this year, it will be roughly 32, three, probably. So it, this year has been really good for my channel. Oh, so let's dive into that success because I think a lot of people might be curious on how, I mean, that's a lot of subscribers in a relatively short amount of time. A lot of people have been on the platform for years and don't have nearly that. I mean, me, me included, but I, it's because I'm not that consistent. So tell me about, um, the, the techniques you've implemented to get to where you're at now and have, uh, the, the growth that you've seen. Well, I can't be sure, you know, why, why it happened and why, because, like I said, there's people that are growing way faster, but there's also people that are growing much slower. And so I stopped measuring myself against other people, um, you know, quite early on because it's quite depressing. If you want to, if you, you're wondering why this guy is growing faster than me and just doesn't make sense. Um, so what I, so a couple of things that I did that I think really did help was, uh, to try and be consistent. Like in the beginning, I thought, you know, one video a week, but then I was like, I don't really have time this week. I also run a business during the day, which is, you know, quite busy. And I didn't really prioritize YouTube, but fairly early on, I did notice that whenever I was consistent, whenever I did put out that one video a week, I would definitely see a difference. And then I just decided, I really like this. I really want to grow this channel. I, I, I'm serious about this. So I started doing two videos a week, not every week, but most weeks. Um, and that also uh, sort of accelerated the growth. Um, I think the one thing I did that really helped was invest everything back into my channel. So whenever there's a bit of income uh, or some sponsorship or whatever, I invested into better gear. I slowed that down a little bit now because I think, you know, I have the good camera. I have the lights now. I don't need to buy everything now. And like we were talking about this a little bit earlier in the stream, uh, you were talking about buying this new drone because, <clears throat> excuse me, because you wanted it, not, not necessarily needed it. Right. And I, I'm there as well. There's these things like, uh, like, uh, jibs or sliders that I really like and, and that I want to buy, but that I don't really need. But I do think um, that investing in that kind of stuff did help me um, improve the quality of my videos a lot. And I do see that in the comments that people appreciate the, the quality of the videos. Um, so I think that that could have helped. And also the topic. I mean, Apple is just really popular and, you know, trying to jump on the new iPhone, the new iPad. I do a lot of recurring things. Um, so apps, uh, accessories, I make it into a series and I tell people that it's a series. So if you like this stuff, please subscribe because there's going to be more. Uh, and that seems to resonate with people. So it, it, those videos do particularly well in uh, subscribers. You brought out a good point. I mean, you said it right right at the beginning is consistency. Consistency mm -hmm. was super important to, to your growth. And I mean, that plays a huge role into the algorithm in YouTube. But it also plays a factor for you because it gets you in the habit. I mean, it's just like working out, right? Using those muscles. Um, it gets easier the more consistent you are. You're, you can pump out videos quicker. Um, the quality gets better because you're learning along the way. A, a consistency can be so beneficial as a creator and uh, it has so many benefits in itself. Um, but you also mentioned that you have a full-time job. Like you have YouTube and then you then you have a job. And lately I've been talking to a lot of people that are full-time creators. Um, would you consider yourself a full-time creator? Like, do you consider yourself having two jobs or is this, would you not consider yourself a full-time creator? Um, I mean, I, I do run a business, a, a totally different business during the day, I would say, but it's not really like that. I mean, there's people that do it during the day and then they have the evenings for YouTube. For me, it's like, I'm doing my regular work and then every free minute I have goes into YouTube. And of course my other free minutes go into my family, but YouTube is like, um, it's definitely a second job. It's, it's a second career. I very much view it as a startup business. I want to grow it. And I also see that it's not just the videos that you post on YouTube, but there are so many opportunities that come your way because of YouTube, like little side avenues and people that want you to make a video for them or, you know, work with them and, you know, give them some advice on their, on their new tech product. And that's really awesome. And I, I have so much fun with it. So I, I really think that I want to 
um, grow this further. And I do really view it as a second, as a second business. That's great. You know, for people that are just starting out, um, and looking back when you just started, um, to be consistent, tell me, how did you manage it? How did you manage your time? You just said you use any like spare minute you have during the day for YouTube. But when you were just starting out for those that are, are at that point now, tell me, walk me through your time, your time management, how, how you balance or how you did balance, you know, full-time job, family, and then trying to start YouTube. And what advice do you have for someone that's, that's, you know, going through that right now? Um, I mean, it's different for, for everyone, of yeah. course, but for me, uh, I'm, I'm obsessive when it comes to these things, right? I, I commit to this and I want this to work. So I'm all about it the entire time. I'm thinking about it the, the whole time and I'm working on it the whole time and I just want it to grow. So I'm constantly at it. But, um, I mean, my advice would be to, to, to try and make, to, to try not to have YouTube um, how should I put this? It's, a diff it's difficult to, to explain, but not to have YouTube cut into your business or vice versa. So you do need to keep it separate and make sure that you don't, you know, have that enthusiasm for YouTube make you less effective in your other business, if you know what I mean. So it's really important to keep that structured. Um, and you know, like you said, it's structure and consistency. So do your four hours of work or whatever you, you, you need for your business. And then do those two hours that you promise yourself, do them. Don't do any less, maybe also not more, but just do them. And just keep doing it all the time. And eventually you'll get quicker about things. Um, you know, you know your equipment better. You have a little bit of a system doing videos. So things will get a lot easier as you go. But in the beginning, you just need to, you know, put your head down, commit and work hard. Yeah. I mean, like you said, it's, it's different for everyone. I think the most important thing is to find a way to fit it in where it doesn't seem like a chore because if you mm. fit it in and if you struggle to fit it in and it starts to feel like a chore it's going to rob you of your joy and that's going to come across in your videos and your videos won't be as good you won't grow as quickly you won't be as consistent because it's a chore so you you just have to take an honest look at your schedule and figure out how you can fit it in um, and maybe it's maybe it's uploading only once a week or maybe every other week to start but find a way to be consistent and still find joy doing it. So don't, don't overstretch yourself and it'll get quicker and you'll be able to do more as you get better at it. So tell me as a tech review channel and reviewing apps, kind of walk me through your process. All right. You, you got, you got a new product. You're going to do a review. Where do you start? Well, <clears throat> I start with uh, doing some real research you know, into, into the product. I don't like doing, uh, I don't like reading briefs and then basically doing a video based on the brief and just showing it from fancy angles. I don't like reading spec sheets. So I do, um, make sure that I spend some serious time with the product or the app. Um, and then what I do is not explain how the product works, but how I use it in my daily workflow and how I think you might be using it in yours. You know, I always tried to sort of look at it from a user's perspective and um, not so much from a, a buyer's perspective, from but a user perspective, if that makes sense. So I'm not so much about specs. I'll mention them if they're relevant. I just usually I just list them on the screen or, you know, quickly glance over them. And then I just talk about how I use this. So, so what is that? How does that make my day better? This, this piece of equipment, or what do I use this iPhone for? Why did I upgrade to the mini and not the pro max? Or why does this iPad make sense in my workflow? Um, and I think that makes the video a little bit interesting. I personally also like to watch videos that are a bit more about storytelling and a little bit less about, you know, the color and, you know, the specs and the nits and the screen. And we all know that we can read the box. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate that, right? Because if I'm going to buy a product, at least for me, right? Because I, I'm, a, I'm a techie, like I love gear. I know the specs. I've looked at the specs. I know mm -hmm. the speed or the battery life or, or whatever the spec is. But I want to know, like, what does that do for me as a user, right? Not necessarily as a consumer because I'm buying the latest and greatest, but like as a user, what, 
How does that translate? How do those specs translate to me actually using the product and what are the benefits? So it's awesome that you tackle that because a lot of people will just do the top, you know, the top sheet, the specs and, and what it has. I want to know how does that benefit me? So that's awesome that, that you do that. Uh, let's transition now a little bit because and talk about podcasting because just like, Half an hour ago, we we ended a podcast for your podcast. So you recently started a podcast. Uh, why don't you tell us the name of it? And you also have a co-host. So why don't you introduce your, your co-host as well? Yeah, so my co-host is Alex from Alex Garen Tech. And uh, Gal- Alex and I started roughly at the same time doing similar content on YouTube. Uh, so we found our, our, each other on uh, on Twitter and we, we talk basically every day we have a little group of fellow creators that are at similar levels and you know we bounce ideas off each other and um alex also has his own business during the day so we're basically we're just you know entrepreneurs we like to do new things and uh, one of those things is podcasts you know we like listening to them and we just wanted to try to see what it's like to see if we can do it as well and uh, we obviously we're total noobs we know nothing about it we're just getting started you probably <laughs> noticed this in the in the one we just finished i had a point it was it was very, it was very fun, but but there's tons that we can improve. So um, so this is very much a new venture and something that I'm extremely um, interested in exploring further. But uh, it's definitely not something I would feel comfortable advising anyone. I'm I'm just green, very green. So I want, what are the things you think you guys can improve on? Because I'm, it's there's things I feel like I can improve on, but. It's been a long time since I started the podcast. So tell me, tell me the struggles that you guys are going through right now starting because you guys are only like five or six episodes in, right? So tell me, yeah. tell me the struggles that you're going through and, and things that you guys want to improve on or you think you need to improve on because I thought it was pretty good. And, you know, they're all fun, but uh, I feel like what, so let me put it this way. When I do these podcast because they're also live on YouTube, which adds a little bit of an element of awkwardness, if you will. <laughs> uh, I like being safe behind my camera or in front of my camera um, when I can edit stuff, you know, and I can redo stuff. But when it's live, it's a different matter. I get a bit nervous. Um, and the other thing is that makes it a little tricky is that f- the fact that we are co-hosts and we're not in the same space. So it's it's kind of difficult to establish who's talking when you know, when do we transition to a new topic? It's kind of all over the place. So we, we definitely need to get a bit, bit more structure in there. Uh, and I think we can also do a little bit better at, um, you know, um, coordinating with the people that we're interviewing, if you will. Uh, so it's a little bit more, you know, it, it's it's less robotic. Well, there, the learning curve, right? You guys are going to get through right. it. And, and the more that you guys podcast together, you're going to, you're going to pick up on each other's vibes and where the conversation is going to go and who's going to pick up what. And that just comes with time and, and working together. How did you guys uh, connect and, and, and tell me about the motivation behind the podcast? Like what was kind of the, some of the motivating factors that went into it? Well, actually, uh, I don't know if it was the podcast or the live streaming that, that uh, interested us first, but we kind of had the idea that it, you know, wasn't mutually exclusive. We could just do both. Um, which maybe not <laughs> in retrospect might not have been the greatest idea. <laughs> it's uh, it's quite difficult to start with uh, doing it like that. But uh, so we, we met on Twitter. I mean, like most people, he commented on my stuff and I, you know, checked out his channel. I was already uh, talking to a few other creators on uh, some chat uh, in uh, Telegram. And um, I just said, you know, you should join us because you, you, you seem to be into this stuff just as much as we are. And so we talk every day and we, like I said, we bounce ideas off each other, which by the way, if you start a channel, find people that do the same thing and talk to them. It's the best thing I've ever done. It's definitely the most valuable thing I did is create a little community of fellow fellow creators because uh, YouTube is a lonely place or could be a lonely place. But if you do it together, it's so much fun. It's just a little sidetrack there. But um, with Alex, so so that's how we basically met. We became good friends, I'd say. Uh, and then we just decided that, uh, you know, why not do this podcast? I had this idea and he's like, okay, that sounds really cool. Let's do it. And, uh, you know, we did a couple now and, uh, you know, see where it goes. Yeah. I, I loved it. You guys are doing great. I think it, it's going to go far. Um, yeah, man, I, I, 
I can't say more about it. Like you're just going to have to go listen to it guys. It'll be linked down in the show notes in the description, but you'll have, have to check it out. Where do you see the podcast going? Uh, you know, these are the early days. What are, what are the big, the big goals for the podcast? I think, uh, you know, what, what we need to do now is to sit together and have a little bit of a plan for 2022. I've noticed that, you know, that helped my YouTube channel to be consistent and have a bit of structure. And it's definitely also going to be necessary for a podcast if we want to make this into a success. And I don't really believe in, in doing things, you know, willy nilly. So I think that's what we're going to do next year. Try to get some structure, uh, try to decide on a frequency. So do we want to do it every month or every two months? And then just also stick to it and, and just have a plan on how to improve every episode, who we want to talk to, et cetera. Well, Patrick, I've enjoyed having you on the show and learning about your creative journey from uh, starting your YouTube channel with just uh, just a, a phone and, and some, some bad lighting <laughs> and how it's progressed to where it's at now, possibly hitting 31,000 subscribers today as we're recording this, which is awesome. Congratulations. And the podcast. You're gonna, you guys are going to have a lot of success. You guys have a very, uh, you guys have a good dynamic together as, as co-hosts, it, very, very good dynamic. And so that listeners pick up on that. So you guys are going to go far. I appreciate it. Um, appreciate your time. Thanks for having me on your show. Thanks for coming on mine. Um, if people want to follow your journey, uh, what are all the things on all the things where they can find you? Uh, not that many things, actually. I'm on YouTube. Uh, on, you know, I'm surprisingly uh, inactive on Twitter and Instagram. I do have them, but uh, you will see that I have barely any followers there. But I'm trying to be a little bit more active. Uh, but, you know, YouTube is, is, is time consuming enough. So I, we'll get there. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thanks again for your time. Yeah, see thanks you. for having me. It was great. Thanks. Yeah. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Patrick. If you want to go follow him, it's at Patrick Rambles, basically everywhere on social, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, most importantly, YouTube. It'll all be linked down in the show notes or the description of the video if you're watching the podcast on uh, on YouTube. As always, guys, I really appreciate your support. I appreciate you guys listening each and every week, and I'll talk to you guys next week. <laughs>